And we basically combined those two things to create Presentium. And we basically came up with this foundational idea that everyone deserves a fair chance to bring their ideas to life, right? So to make the playing field level, uh, also to help people tell better stories. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky. This is the show that gets you in front of your best audience and keeps you there. Now on today's show, I'm on the line with the wonderful Rajat Mishra. Welcome to the show, Rajat. Thank you, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's absolutely wonderful to have you here. We were just speaking before the call just to ease our way in today's amazing session. We're going to be talking about uh, a business that uh, Raja and his team, uh, he co-founded, in fact, called Presentium. Now, uh, before we jump into the core of the call, uh, Raja, I love to learn about the people that I'm talking with because at the end of the day, we know that business is business. It's mechanical. There's lots of constants in business, but one of the most amazing variables to any business other people behind it so I would love to uh, learn a little bit more about you by starting off um, asking you where you're located well Rick I live in uh, the Bay Area in uh, California in the US so uh, in a town called Los Altos it's between Palo Alto and uh, Mountain View so in the heart of Silicon Valley Oh, absolutely wonderful. And is uh, is your team like uh, all located locally or is it uh, dispersed across the globe? We have a global team, Rick, and we've always been kind of a distributed model, mm-hmm. people working from home even pre, pre-COVID. So we have a team that's based in the U.S. Uh, that's all over. Some of them are local. The Some of the engineer engineering talent here is local. But we also have a team in India, mm-hmm. which is a team of designers and a team of data scientists and machine learning folks. So uh, the US and India are the two locations and uh, everyone works remotely. So Yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's lots to uh, talk about in terms of how co- uh, COVID has impacted your business. I know that it's had an impact on others. It may be um, uh, awkwardly fortuitous that uh, things have happened the way they have for a business like your own. I'd love to delve into that in a little while, Rajat. But um, what is a local landmark um, that people would know uh, where you live? A local landmark? Uh, maybe the Golden Gate Bridge of in course. San Francisco? Yep, been there. Love it. Uh, yeah, I think that's one. Uh, Napa is pretty cool. Napa Valley, the wine country, is pretty close to where we live. Uh, what else? You've got uh, um, Alcatraz. You have Mavericks Beach, um, Surf Break. There's lots. Yes. There, lots there, isn't there? You have, you have the 49ers. Um, <laughs> uh, Are you a sports follower? I I I do love sports, but you know I grew up in India, so uh, my first love is cricket. Oh, of right? course. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, every everything else, you know, everything else is, is is a far second. But I do love football and baseball also. Absolutely, I'm a, I'm an Australian cricket follower, and uh, obviously we're quite competitive, aren't we? The the Indians and Australians. It's a wonderful competition to follow. That that is right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, even though from my perspective, maybe it's not. <laughs> as competitive, but is that just is a matter of opinion? Right? Oh, of course, absolutely. Look, um, I'd love to ask you, do, you, do you have much time away from, from the workplace? Because I think that on balance, you know, it's one thing to be a hard worker and always at it, but I wonder if there's any consequences in not having any downtime. Do you get a break? Uh, I do, actually. Um, I, um, uh, I um, you know, my wife and I, we've, We've tried to boil down kind of what is the uh, thing that's most important to us, and we came up with a word called harmony. Yep. That's what we picked. So between health, family, and work, you know, we try to make sure there's a balance. So uh, we do. We have two kids, so we try to make sure we do. We spend time with the kids and with each other. Um, like every July, I take my son out for. We do a father-son trip, and we've been doing it since he was four years old. He's ten oh, now. Oh, we couldn't do it excellent. last year. That's excellent. But like you know, speaking of cricket, we went to the cricket uh, World Cup in England. Oh wow! Um, in July the year before, so we've gone to South Africa together as father and son, uh, Costa Rica, and gonna all kinds of all kinds of places. Yeah, that's incredible. Together. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Uh, you know, because you can always get. Uh, 
you know, you, you can't get more time, can you? But, you know, you can have these experiences while they're young. It's very important. That's, that's right. That's right. You know, someone told me that, you know, life is an ice cream. I eat it before it melts. So Oh, that is wonderful. I've not heard that before. <laughs> that. I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah. So life so, yeah is like... so... Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no life... Saying... Yeah. life is like an ice cream. Eat it before it go... goes away. Love it. Eat it before it melts. Right? Eat it before it melts. Yeah. And, and then I know that in, you know, Probably my son's ten, maybe in three, four years, and my daughter is five, maybe so six, six years for her, and they'll probably be spend more time with their friends and not as much with their parents. Yep, true. Right? And, yep. Um, uh, uh, so this is the time, right? So I feel it's like a clock is ticking. So we want to build as many memories as we can uh, with uh, with the kids and also with with the family. So uh, I've gone, and we'll talk about kind of my story, but I've consciously prioritized that, Rick. Yep. Uh, because I'm sure I won't regret spending more time with my kids when I'm older. Yeah, absolutely. There's got to be that sense of urgency there, doesn't there? I um, I wonder, Rajat, um, when you were growing up, um, where were you exactly and what are some of the fond memories? Just one fond memory that you have growing up. Yeah, well, great question, Rick. Well, I grew up in a uh, middle-class family in India. Yep. Uh, and, you know, we were uh, we were not rich, we were not poor, we were, you know, we were comfortable and uh, we were happy for all the small um, small joys of life and uh, my dad was in the Indian Navy um, so he would he was a captain on ships and uh, on Indian Navy ships and my fondest memory is when we were in Mumbai I think I was like six seven years old my dad had a little, had a little scooter Rick that he would drive and uh, my mom would sit in the back I would stand in front and my brother would sit in the middle so there were four of us <laughs> Uh, it was pretty pretty unsafe, but you know, by, <laughs> that's the way it is. Yeah, and then we would drive along the coast of Mumbai. You know, the road was called Marine Drive, and then you could see you could see some of my the ships there. Oh wow! And my one of my fondest memories is me pointing to one of those ships and saying, you know, that's my dad's ship, right? Yeah. So that's that's what I remember. Just on that scooter, on that blue scooter, with the wind in your hair, just being with your parents and just being happy to see all the ships in the sea. Yeah, when life was much simpler, I, I wonder, was your father, uh, I guess, a, a very formative figure in terms of your, I guess, your attitude towards um, business and, and life in general? Who who helped shape you, you to be the man that you are today, do you think? Yeah, I think, um, I think a lot of people, uh, clearly my dad had a big influence, right? He's a very optimistic dreamer, Yep. right? And um, so I think I get that from him. I, I um, my mom is kind of practical, you know, protect the downside. So I get that from her. <laughs> but I love uh, I love reading, and uh, I think a lot of my um, uh, I think a lot of my um, heroes or you know uh, mentors are people who whose works I have read because uh, I, I feel that in a book people distill kind of their their best wisdom, and uh, just having the opportunity to read that I think would be is awesome, right? So, someone like um, Ray Dalio, who's the founder of Bridgewater Associates, you know, I love what he's written. Mm -hmm. uh, I love some of the give and take stuff that Adam Grant has written. I read a lot of history, so so I would say it's um, I would say books, you know, have been the most formative experience. Uh, influence yeah, and yeah. Maybe, maybe a man I am. Absolutely. Now, we've got a lot of uh, startup entrepreneurs on the line. We have existing small to medium-sized business owners, Rajat. Now, they love to listen about the stories from those who have walked the path before them. Um, you know, we always hear about the successful side of business, but when when there's rocks on the road and you hit bumps and things like that, how do you deal with them? Is, that, is there a special type of person that needs to be involved or you just have to have the right mindset? How do you go about dealing with uh, problems? Yeah, uh, I can tell you my approach. I mean, I, um, I'm very grateful, Rick, for uh, how life has turned out, mm -hmm. right? And um, like, you know, when I was on that scooter, if someone told me life will turn out this way, you know, having had a chance to be a senior executive at a company like Cisco and then now building the company I've always dreamed about with two wonderful kids and living in the Bay Area and working on tech, which I love. So I'm just very grateful uh, and I'm full of gratitude. And when things go bad, I, I just remind myself of the time when I was in high school or in college. And then I think of, you know, if my, the 15 year old Rajat had heard this is how things will be 
you know, I would be overjoyed. So no problem. You know, no, pro no problem is you know, counterbalances all the good luck and uh, help and uh, good things that have happened to me in my life. So that's how I look at it. Yep. And um, I, I, I genuinely feel that every problem can be solved. Yep. And, um, and that's, how I, that's how I take it. But, you know, it's, everything is already so awesome that, uh, you know, every, everything is a bonus at this point, Rick. Yeah, absolutely. Love your attitude. Uh, you know, the, the attitude of gratitude, as it were. Now, uh, you, you, you've you touched on tech. This is clearly the, going to be the core of today's um, call. You've had lots of experience in uh, senior executive roles elsewhere. You've just mentioned some of them. I've, I'm actually looking through your Presentium uh, leadership team. It's wonderful. I'd love to touch on them momentarily. But I think it's time to, to ask the obvious question. What is Presentium and what's it all about? Yeah, so, um, you know, the foundational belief kind of behind Presentium, Rick, is this idea that uh, everyone should have a fair chance to bring their ideas to life. Right? Yeah. I think it comes from my upbringing, you know, realizing that, you know, the playing field is not always fair, Rick, or is not always level. You know, I found that, you know, people who are more privileged get more shots at goal. People who are have more money have more more chances and opportunities. So I always thought that the playing field was on level. Uh, and the other thought I've kind of had growing up is that stories move people. Right? Yep. People have ideas, but in the end, we are all social. And things wrapped in a story is what moves people, not data by itself or not the idea by itself. And um, these two thoughts, Rick, have been kind of the two intertwined threads that I've been thinking about, mulling about since I was a kid, that the playing field not being level mm -hmm. and stories move people. And I went through a lot of roles, right? I worked at Microsoft and McKinsey and then Cisco, and I was looking for my ikigai. You know, what is yeah. the thing that I would love doing that would also help the world and also uh, be commercially kind of viable? And, um, and it, it, I, I went back to these two thoughts that I've always had my whole life. And we basically combine those two things, Rick, to create uh, Presentium. And we basically came up with this foundational idea that everyone deserves a fair chance to bring their ideas to life, right? So to make the playing field level and also to make, uh, also to help people tell better stories. And uh, so with that foundational belief, we created Presentium, mm -hmm. right? And the idea was uh, and we started with the services business, and I can talk more about what we are building now yeah, on that right. idea. Mm -hmm. But the idea behind Presentium was, hey, look, uh, business storytelling, right? People spend a lot of time creating business presentations, right? Um, so we have a business side to Presentium and a social side. So the business side, Rick, is helping, um, is, is, is helping uh, people save time, business professionals save time and to make their ideas shine in business presentations. And the social side is to help underprivileged children realize their potential. So for every dollar that we make, uh, for every, uh, every slide that we make, we donate a dollar to a children's charity around the world. So that's Excellent. what Presentium is about, right? It's about helping middle managers save time and make their ideas shine. We make business presentations for them and we do it overnight. So you send us your document at 5.30 p.m. Mm -hmm. And by 9.30 a.m. next day, you'll have a polished presentation in your inbox. No way. And as we have grown the business uh, through word of mouth, we've also been helping charities around the world and, and, and donating and helping some of these kids. So that's what presentation is, Presentium is in a nutshell, right? We're trying to democratize business communication. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I really appreciate that, Rajat. Now, I have a question. I used to... Um, be responsible as a quality manager for creating presentations within a business as, as a corporate uh, for an international organization and many other local and national businesses. I always found um, them to be obviously time consuming. So I wonder how is it that Presentium knows what the client wa wants without actually having to be deeply involved with their operations? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. It, um, people do spend a lot of time. I think more than 100 million people spend more than 30 billion hours every year, oh, wow. right? uh, building more than 2 billion presentations, yep. right? Just yeah, some yeah. startling, startling numbers. So your question is, how do we know? I think um, there are a few parts, right? First is our, uh, we've, we've built over a million slides now. Mm -hmm. right? So we have that kind of repository. We have that knowledge of usually how slides, how slides work, right? 
And if you think about what people want, it kind of it's at three levels, right? It's what kind of company it is, what kind of person it is, and then what are you actually communicating in, on the on the slide or in the presentation? Yeah. So what we do is for every company, we um, we have management consultants who understand what a company does. We mm -hmm. primarily serve healthcare companies and high tech companies, so they know the industry. We understand the company brand guidelines. So how do you, how does that company tell the story? And then for each slide, we know we know there are roughly 50 main types of presentations, and we also know what kind of layouts people use on slides. So um, so by using that information, we are able to uh, organize a slide and add the design features that make sense. And for every customer who uses us, Rick, we maintain a personal profile. Yeah. And so if you use us, we will know that, look, are you a big picture person or do you like icons or do you like few less colors? So each person gets a very tailored output uh, based on how they've used us, based on the company they are in, and based on what type of presentation they're making. And it's a constant like learning process. Yeah. The more you use Presentium, the better better we get. Uh, what I'm really proud of is, you know, our uh, our revision rate is less than two percent. What that means is that less than two percent of the time, when people get their presentations in the morning, they send it back to us for any changes. So ninety eight percent of the time, people are super happy with 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 what they get, and it's yeah. really a lot of that business understanding and that design we bring that together. Yeah, that's a really important insight. I do appreciate you opening up and sharing that because that would, you know, be one of my first questions. Now, uh, you talked about storytelling uh, as well as being a, a major component in in all of this. Now, um, I, I, I just have rattling through my my brain death by PowerPoint. How do you how do you go about? Uh, well, clearly, this is more than just a PowerPoint thing. This is a real storytelling experience. How do you go about? Uh, I guess intertwining storytelling in in a business's organization um it seems like a fascinating process yes yes and uh you know what i would say rick is um most people would think and kind a of storytelling is an art and we have many kind of boutique firms helping uh helping tell storytelling as an art form my kind of personal belief is that storytelling is both an art and a science mm -hmm. and uh, we have enough data and uh, the technology is at a point where you know there is a need to infuse some of that tech and science into storytelling. So, uh, Presentium, the business, focuses a lot on at the slide level making making things clear and adding visual design. What we also do, we also offer a, um, a training um, program, mm -hmm. uh, Rick, uh, which we call Think Deeply, Speak Simply. Right, which helps helps our customers with uh, storytelling, right? And uh, because if you think of it, great presentations are not just great slides. They require you to understand the business problem, which is the think deeply part, and then it requires you to speak it very simply, which is kind of the speak simply part. So yep. we talk about how you use different kind of storylines in the think deeply, speak simply workshop, you know, as a means to reach out to more people in the middle of the corporate pyramid, because I think executives get enough support. We also have a blog and a podcast of the same name, Think Deeply, oh, Speak fantastic. Simply, which yeah. is the art and science of business communication, right? So the services is one part, but through this Think Deeply, Speak Simply brand, we're trying to get the storytelling principles out to as many people as possible who cannot uh, use the service. Yeah, fantastic. Now, you talked about um, tech and, and powering uh, Presentium. What type of technology um, powers uh, behind the scenes? Yeah, so um, so on the Presentium side, um, the tech really is in the back end mm -hmm. uh, because for the customer, it's a super simple experience, right? Just send Beautiful. it by five thirty, you'll get it back by nine thirty in the morning. But everything needs to happen in that fifteen hours, right, Rick? So you can imagine every second of the, of that time really counts. Vital. So yep. so we have <laughs> the tech helps us with the workflow, making sure things are organized. We also learn your preferences, so we, we capture that, and we make sure we, we bring you the best of business understanding and, and visual design. So a lot of the tech in Presentium is making the backend workflow efficient and customized, right? Um, and that's what we're doing on the services side. I talked about kind of the, the, the thing deeply speak simply media efforts we have. What we're, what we're really starting now uh, is using, using AI to actually build the software 
that helps people build presentations on their own. Fantastic. And uh, we are kind of in early phases of that. But if you go back to our vision of everyone should have a fair chance to uh, bring their ideas to life, I think there are three legs to that stool. There is a service which you can use to, uh, we can make presentations for you. There is the media, which is the free content and the podcast and blog to disseminate the ideas more. And yep. then the third leg is the software where people can build it themselves, right? And we are in early phases of that, mm -hmm. but you, you can think about it like, um, you can imagine if we have a lot of data at this point, so we know how presentation should be built and we can guide people to build really personalized presentations for, uh, for their audience. Excellent. Right? Uh, and I think even, even tech, even kind of AI has reached a point now where once you start consuming this information, you can learn that each person wants a different kind of presentation. So yeah. how do you take that business understanding? How do you take who is the audience? How do you take all those design and all those slides and create a very simple guided experience for people? That's what we're building and we, are, um, we will go live in, um, with the beta in June. So we are in alpha right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. so we have a very small group of customers who love the product so far, but in a couple of months, uh, the product is going to go live. Very exciting, very exciting. Looking forward to that. And before you know it, it'll be on our doorstep and everybody will be knocking down your door to get access to it. Now, earlier in the call, Rajat, you talked about uh, um, business uh, using icons in their presentation. So I'd love to talk about the visual aspect and uh, how important the visual aspect is and whether or not you have more than just static imagery inside presentations, because we all know that video is uh, obviously the 21st century uh, modus operandi for most businesses. Um, tell us how all of that comes together. Yeah, that's that's a great that's a great point, Rick. Uh, I think what we learned is everyone consumes information in a different way, mm -hmm. right? So one broad categorization we have of our customers are customers who like minimal designs and people who like vibrant designs. So for me, as a techie, you know, I'm a computer science undergrad. I yep. actually like less stuff on the slide, right? So the Google search bar is a thing of beauty for me, right? And so the more things on a slide is more distracting for me. But there are people who like, uh, my wife, for example, she likes more colors on, uh, on a slide and, and big, uh, big images. So that's one thing we do. We really think about um, what visual preferences you like. And uh, we like to think that um, visuals and the visual design, you know, they are like clothes for your ideas. And uh, unless your ideas have the right clothes, they may not be received well especially in a corporate setting where people have very little time to digest what your ideas are. Yeah. So, so that's very important. And uh, video, so infographics is kind of the next step from slides. And mm -hmm. then there are posters and then there are videos, right? So we are not um, deep into videos right now, uh, but we've been doing a lot of work on infographics, on quantitative, on data visualization um, and, and also slides. Yep, fantastic. There's certainly a lot uh, in the pipeline, I'm sure and certain of that. Now, earlier on in the call, we talked about uh, the pandemic and COVID and uh, what its uh, effect is on the world. How is it uh, changing your industry and uh, what have you seen? Have there been any good points that have come out of that experience? Yeah. So, uh, you know, thankfully, Rick, um, the pandemic has been good for business communication and business presentations. And uh, the reason for that is, I think there's like there's been like 150 percent, I would say, increase in presentations with the with COVID. And the reason for that is now that everyone's working virtual, working working virtually, mm -hmm. there is more of a need to be more clear and succinct. And most of the communication happens through presentations now, right? And you don't have that uh, walk walk down the aisle to the coffee coffee table and have a conversation. Most of it has become a lot more formal, and uh, and people we are finding people are spending more time preparing their presentations because attention spans are short you know people in, in people are in unlimited zoom calls so for us the demand has kind of gone up mm -hmm. and the need and if you think about even even think of zoom right if you're presenting uh, a presentation on zoom or any other software the presentation takes up 80 percent of the screen and you know, the yep. people become really really tiny contrast <laughs> that with a live presentation where people focus on the person and the presentation is kind of a, a supporting artifact. Yeah. Right. So, so the the uh, the paradigm has shifted, right? So, which has led to a need for being more thoughtful in how you present, 
and also because uh, people are distracted and the people have fatigue there's also a need to make presentations more lively and fun like for example we had a client who came to us and said hey can you create a spaceship team for this presentation so because people are getting so bored right so yeah. we, we, we really created like a Star Wars kind of team, right? With rockets and little panels that people could people could look at just to keep people's attention. Yeah. And we've had people ask us to do like mountaineering teams or add more animation to your point. Can you make it just how can we add visuals? Spice it up. To make, to make it more fun. And it all it has also led to a realization that we should put less on slides than more, right? You mentioned death by PowerPoint. Yes. Usually because you know there's a, there's too much information on on the slide. So people also have become more thoughtful. So from a demand perspective, that's how COVID has affected us. Now, clearly from a supply point of view, our team, which is international, I think has gone through the same challenges, Rick, like any other team working together, right? Yeah. Um, I think mental health is an important, important, important issue. Uh, how do you make sure the team stays connected? And this thing now in the US where we live has been going on for over a year. Mm-hmm. And, and in India, it's been over a year and things are still getting worse. Right. So how do you as a leader keep your team motivated and inspired and uh, through the pandemic? That's a challenge we've faced uh, just like many, many other companies. Right. But I think we are kind of grateful in a sense. You know, we're not like in the restaurant business. Right. Yes. Our, our getting, demand has still been demand has still been strong. Yeah, they're getting uh, crushed, aren't they? Um, and you know, to everybody who's listening to the call today, um, all the very best, and I hope things turn a corner soon for every sector, every industry out there. Now, I'd love to talk about your leadership team, if we could. Um, who actually is uh, part of the Presentium team? If you could introduce them for us. Yeah, and I would, I would love to, Rick. So Presentium, so our story, uh, you know, uh, my wife actually founded Presentium about yep. five years ago. Yep. And uh, when we had this idea to delve into business presentations, Rick, you mentioned you have many uh, kind of early in career entrepreneurs. You know, we were not, you know, 20 somethings looking to start a business, <laughs> right? So we took a very different approach, right? Both of us had had successful corporate careers. And, you know, a, a business or a business is basically a set of hypotheses that you're, pro- you're proving or disproving. And or a startup, that's what a startup is, right? And once yep. you de-risk the hypothesis, then you have a business. So what we said, hey, instead of both of us like quitting our jobs and jumping headfirst into this, let's think of a more phased approach, right? And uh, one of us should leave our jobs first and try it out and see if there's a market. So five years ago, my wife, she left Genentech. She used to lead data science at Genentech. Uh, she left, it's a you know, uh, cancer drug company here in the Bay Area. And she started Presentium, so she was the founder and uh, uh, founder founder of Presentium, and she just started um, uh, working with Inish, her friends and colleagues in the beginning, and that's how the company started. Yes. So um, she and I we met in business school, so we met at the Wharton School in University of Pennsylvania, and uh, she uh, she grew up here in the Bay Area, and uh, she also uh, went to McKinsey and Company before starting Presentium, right? So that's the She's now the founder and president. Yep. Right. I um, I left Cisco. Uh, I was this, I was a senior vice president in the CX group. About four four years into Presentium, as I was doing as I was growing in my corporate career, you know, Presentium was growing. We were trying to decide what's the best time for us to really jump in and go all in, and uh, we decided early early last year that it would be a great time. So yep. that's when I left and we said, okay, let's continue to grow the services business, but we need these other two legs of the stool. We need the software and we need the, the media. So that's when I joined. So I'm, I'm the CEO of the company now and a co-founder because we founded this together. Um, we are blessed to have a great leadership team. So we have our head of platform engineering is Rat Shetty. Yep. And Rat and I actually were friends in Microsoft. So we've known each other for 20 years. So we, um, my first job was a software engineer at Microsoft, and that's where I met him. Yep. And he has had a very illustrious engineering career working at Amazon Web Services, Uber, Starbucks. And he has joined us to build the uh, platform, uh, which we are in the alpha of, like I talked about. So Rath is on the team. Uh, another uh, person on the team is uh, Mo Jain. Mo Jain and I used to work at Cisco. He again is an incredibly talented guy. He uh, went to Wharton, worked at McKinsey, so he heads product for us. 
We have uh, uh, Shreyos, who is our machine learning head. So he was a CTO at a public company in India. So he leads the machine learning, uh, data science, and search back in India. Yeah. And we have uh, we have a few art directors, like Trisha is one mm -hmm. of our art directors here in the U.S. She's been working with us for three years. Just an amazing, amazing designer with a great aesthetic. So that's you the can, team. Yeah, and uh, you can see you can see um, more about the team, can't you? Obviously, on your website. Yes. Yeah. Presentium.com has. Uh, if you go to leadership, you can you can see the team there. But really blessed, Rick, that you know these people uh, left their jobs and decided to join us to go build this company and uh, on our dual mission, right, of democratizing presentations and helping underprivileged kids. You have uh, a great vision. Clearly, it's a, a strong vision, which is vitally important. As you've just mentioned, you've got some wonderful talent that have followed you on that journey. Uh, congratulations. What's happening with Presentium is going to change the way that uh, presentations are delivered. Now, um, when people want to find out more about Presentium, they may want to connect with you or any one of your team. Uh, what is the process for doing that and where can they find you? Yeah, no, thank you for asking, Rick. Uh, you can find uh, us on the internet at, you know, we, on presentium.com, that's P-R-E-Z-E-N-T-I-U-M.com, right? And, um, uh, and uh, so you can, you can ask any questions from there. You can also email us at ask at presentium.com. You can email <laughs> us there. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm actually, I've deleted my Twitter and uh, Facebook accounts. And maybe, Rick, that's a conversation for a different day. <laughs> right, so I'm just I'm just on on LinkedIn, yep. right? And Makes you can sense. find me on you know if you look for Rajat Mishra on LinkedIn, you can you can you can find me there. Excellent, Rajat. Thank you so very much for opening up today and sharing a bit about your life and your team and everything that's happening with Presentium. It's been a fantastic call. And uh, as is customary, I'll be making sure that the links back to Rajat and his wonderful team at Presentium.com are available for you no matter where you find this call. You are going to find the links back to Rajat. And Rajat, with all that being said, thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you, Rick. It was an absolute pleasure. I appreciate the time. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.